Um, good afternoon. Now I understand why I became a visual artist and not a theater player. It's a very different setting. Um, I thought I'd take this opportunity and also for this section to speak about an art center that I uh, co-founded. Um, that I am, I'm not running the art center, I'm also not part of the operations, but I'm advisor ever since it was founded. Well, it's called, um, in 2009, uh, when we founded Taipei Contemporary Art Center, we had a very long discussion on the naming of this new initiative. Taipei Contemporary Art Center is the non-profit organization uh, with an association of artists, curators, and culture activists behind. So, um, the reason why we chose this name was the question, who owns a city? Who owns Taipei? Who owns these terminologies of a city? Is it um, just official, the mayor, the city hall, a private company? Or uh, is it also the people there? So, um, so this, this is how we started. And then also, what does this notion Taipei define? Is it um, a capital? Is it a culture? Is it a history? Or is it a brand? Or is it an audience or community? Um, so in this sense, within the spirit of this section, we reclaim the city. We thought we should, as a community, take back the name and not leave it only to companies or the mayor. Um, but also by naming this, city, uh, this art center, Taipei Contemporary Art Center, we had to take up a responsibility. And also we uh, had to therefore address a wider audience to say. But then also we had to be critical to what it means, what public means, and also who controls the word public or public with what interest. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how this art center came into existence. I grew up in Austria, in Vienna, in Austria, and I moved, um, I had 2006 an exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Taipei, and 2007 I was shooting a film. In the same year, the Museum of Contemporary Art, the new uh, commission of Taipei, managed um, to dismantle the private foundation of Mocha and turned it into a city foundation. So basically, the only strong independent museum was now in control within the city, uh, basically the commissioner, and it became a program of creative industry and the extension of the city pol uh, policy. So that made me think about what does independence mean? And who controls these spaces with what interest and reason and what are spaces therefore, let's say, good for? Um, it surprised me that when this happened, there was no uproar within the arts community. There was no discussion on these things. And I thought I should do something. Um, the same year I talked to the biennial, Taipei Biennial Curators. And instead of showing the latest film that I produced, I talked to them and I said I would like to do a different initiative. So, uh, for uh, the Taipei Biennial 2008, therefore, I initiated a project that I privately funded, but I wanted to use the Biennial for its prestige and for all what it means to Taiwan, but then also to take it to criticize the cultural policy of the city in itself. So there was uh, the poster. Um, what are the conditions and who owns and controls what space? What are the position of contemporary art in relation to capital, the bureaucratic system, or official culture policy? The project had three sections. First part of the project that I initiated was a pavilion. It was basically the physical presence of the whole project in the city. It was the pavilion next to the main museum. The second part was a conference that I did. Um, but instead of an open conference where people come and go and nobody listens to each other or people know already what people will say, um, I decided to invite 47 of the most uh, active uh, independent curators and artists and culture activists on a beach holiday <laughs> for a whole weekend. Um, I locked them down in a hotel and um, 
uh, reserved all the bars, the restaurant, the conference rooms uh, for one weekend. Um, it's also um, perhaps contemporary art in many countries and places seems not to have a, a lobby or very weak lobby in comparison in Taiwan to dance or music or classical music. So I thought I wanted them to sit together and um, because they had more in common than let's say the commercial gallery world. And they, these people had more in common than the com official cultural policy. I forced them to sit together because I wanted to create a dialogue to reflect the status quo of the situation at that time in Taiwan, Taipei, but then also to think of what can we do. So, uh, and then the third part was um, a magazine. I uh, convinced uh, a Taiwanese-based Artco magazine that every thought that you have, it needs to be publicized. It needs to be out there. So I got the whole issue and we um, devoted it to the whole project. Looking back at all these, um, at these, this project, all the three aspects were about public presence, about claiming space, and by space I mean physical space, culture space, and political space. Month later, um, after this project, this whole group of people approached me and said, "June, why not let's found a real physical art center?" So again, we first held a press conference to claim something. And then I started to negotiate with both companies and city. And half a year later, Taipei Contemporary Art Center opened. Um, <laughs> so that was what, at that time, we thought the art community needed most was a voice. That's why it's expressed both in the name and also in its logo as a megaphone. We didn't need so much exhibitions. Exhibitions are fancy and expensive. So that's why we devoted the biggest space for presentation to create a platform of discussion and dialogues and also critique. Um, the greatest quality, but also the most fragile good of a democratic civil society was free speech or is free speech. And to have a public sphere to freely express it. Like now, like this forum, like me standing here, and it means to take up a position and to make use of it. So let me give you one more example. In March 2014, um, there was one of the biggest pro protests in the history of Taiwan. This was a, it's called Sunflower Movement. And uh, it was against the trade agreement between mainland China and Taiwan. More than 10,000 students, people, camped outside of the legislation UN. So somehow it felt, everybody felt that Taiwan's identity, their identity, Taiwan's sovereignty was at stake. Many people, students, my students, artists approached me and we discussed what can we do. Musicians went there to play music, doctors went after work there to uh, consult and everything. And uh, even hairdressers went after work to give free haircuts. So what can art do and what can institutions do? Taipei Contemporary Art Center held a conference or a meeting three days after the protest started. And uh, first it was the idea to do screenings, but my reaction was to say, no, we shouldn't do any of these things. Um, maybe what is most important is to be there. And therefore, let's think about how can we be there? So my proposal at that evening was to close down the art center to therefore completely close down all the operations and move the art center into the protest site, to open up a temporary site at there. All the programming, the office was moved into that space because the art center was found to address culture issues and when culture issues is, are at the crossroads or at peril, an art center has to make the biggest step that it can do. To me, was this the strongest sign so, uh, um, I have another minute, all right. Uh, well, so in the end, we did this screening, but it was out of the reaction of what the students and the protesters needed, not the first reaction in the first place. Um, after all, and even until today, um, to me, founding the space 
the most important aspect was to create a platform to express opinions, to take up a position and a critique in public. It is a privilege that I got to appreciate more and more after moving to that region. It is a very fragile good, especially in that region, in Taiwan's democracy, especially when you look at the neighboring places like Hong Kong or China and what is going on there. Just to finish off with the last thing, this is a text that, uh, the title of a text that was written for my monograph last year by Barbara Steiner. And in fact, we had a, a talk last week and we decided to take off the word artist. So being an enabler, stimulator, activator, facilitator, instigator, inspirer of social processes. And let me say one last thing then. At a discussion recently with a friend, we thought that all these protests, the sunflower protest in Taiwan, the umbrella movement in Hong Kong, they were not so much against a liberal economic system like many movements or protesters in the West, but they were firstly a critique to the existing governments and to the endangerment of freedom and the rights of citizens. This question of what is public connected directly to the political implication, the freedom of expression and what each of us can do is defined or has defined my work recently. It led me to a stronger interest and engagement in social and political issues and above all, a constant reflection on the role and the responsibility of an artist in society. Thank you. Wow, that was heavy. That was a lot to think about. I, I just want to um, center this a little bit. I'm really curious, like I love the creation of the space and you talk a lot about that. I'd like to know two things. One, how many people like operate there or work there? And then two, do you, have you found that it, is, it has become a magnet? Have, been, have you had like people coming? Is it something that is, has this, by creating this space, has it actually drawn people to the space? Well, it was founded by more than 80 people. Mm -hmm. um, there are currently five, five to six people working in the art space. It's mainly privately funded. Mm -hmm. um, but there are more than 30 volunteers in there. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of students, art students, social uh, anthropology students, or they are volunteering for the space. So they get a meal, they get uh, educated, there are special programs for that. And um, so that's, that's sort of the, 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 the structure behind. One thing to say, the building that I showed, we moved out after three years. When the contract with the real estate company finished, the space moved out. But then it started, now it moved to the third space. And it's interesting that suddenly, even though it wasn't planned to move to a next space and a next space, um, the idea was how to rethink the space. Is there still a necessity for it? After three years, the first building had 800 square meter. Um, people thought, well, after three years, there is no more necessity to make this noise. The art center should concentrate on different sort of modes of engagement and discussions. And maybe it's now time to make exhibitions and other projects. So it was very important always to reflect at what certain points, certain moments, what the art center could do and what also was sort of like needed. Were there different buildings? Were they different like parts of the city? Different part of the city. So did you draw different, different energies? Yeah. Did, was it different energies, different kinds of people Absolutely. would come out? Um, in the, the second space was moved into the shopping area and the space that is now moved back to old Taipei. It was engaging very much again in a very different uh, neighborhood, again, different community. And the art center therefore went to the community and wasn't waiting, let's say, for the community to come to the, to the art center. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you.